Hello and welcome. This is podcast number two. Welcome back if you watched last week's and welcome if you are new. My name is Nancy. I'm also known as Unpicker Queen on Instagram. This is a little space where I like to show you what I am making, what I will be making, and all my crafty projects because I love to craft. So I thought this week we might start off with some things I finished and then some things I'm working on. Um, I also got some yarn in the mail, so I'd like to show you all of that as well. And then I would like to talk a little bit about socks, knitting socks. And I would also like to talk a little bit about my button business because it's almost time to reopen my shop. Yeah, so we might start with what I'm wearing. So I, in fact, I wore one of these last week. I just love this pattern. This is an orchard's dress by, I wrote it down this week, Vivian Xiao Chen. Um, Sorry. It is just a loose um, Peter Pan collared shirt um, and I love it. I got this linen when I lived in Perth from Potter & Co. It's nice and light. It is, the colour was called Apricot. I'm not sure what sort it was. Um, if you haven't heard of Potter & Co, it is my favourite shop to get linen at the moment. In fact, of all time. Um, the staff are so lovely and they will help you as much as they can. Um, yeah, I also put some little buttons that I made myself on it, um, which we'll talk about later. And um, I put bees around the bottom, which I probably wouldn't do again because it was really time consuming. I just used the embroidery function on my, um, my sewing machine. And yeah, but it took a lot of thread and it's not even that noticeable. <laughs> so yeah, whatever. Um, I have been really inactive this week on Instagram, and that is because I have been making my mum's birthday present. I, sorry, it's on my ironing board and <laughs> we're jiggling. Um, I didn't want her to see it, so her birthday's on Friday. Hopefully I'll be able to give it to them. Hopefully she won't watch it until then. Hi, mum. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I made her a scuff number one in a... Bellissimo yarn I got at Gain Sisters in the colour Duck Egg. So, this is the right side. Um, it has this really cute laced pattern. Um, I think I did seven, no I know I did, seven repeats and it only calls for six. But the yarn that it suggests for it is, I think, a little bit lighter 8-ply than this was. Um, and I was worried it wasn't going to go all the way around her neck. So it comes in two options, either a scarf or a bandana. So this is the scarf option, and you can tie it up here. Um, when I was knitting, I was really worried that it wasn't going to be um, big enough because of, it was so tight. But you can see here, the, um, the garter stitch especially relaxed so much when I blocked it. Um, I'm not sure if I would have done another repeat if I could have, but this is literally what I had left um, from my two skeins of Bellissimo, so, which is here. This is just in a different colour, but this is the one I used, the Bellissimo 8. Um, it's really soft. I really like it. I've used the 4-ply before, so I knew that it was going to be okay. Um, I really hope she likes it. I was really worried about the colour midway through. I thought it looked acrylic, but it's softened and looks great since I've blocked it. Um, in fact, it's probably a bit brighter on the screen than it is in real life, but it's really nice. I like it. Um, yeah, so that's my main finished project of the week. Um, and then I, oh yeah, I showed you, in fact, this is blue as well. <laughs> I showed you last week my cutout, um, Anna, Alan, Anthea, and the Orchards by Vivian Shen, Sh Shell Chen, um, Mash. And I finished it. Um, here it is here. So this one I got from Japan on my honeymoon. It's not a Marimekko. <laughs> um, yeah, I used some vintage buttons that I had in my stash that my grandma gave me from, I think my great aunt. When she died, all her stuff just disappeared. Except for her craft stuff. Yeah, so um, the only thing I would have done differently maybe is to make the arm... Um, a bit deeper it's quite 
it is quite narrow and I mean with the linen it's stretched out a bit but I've got a cotton version and it's really quite tight not uncomfortable just maybe a bit narrower than I'm used to so yeah but and I probably should have worn this today to show you but it's really warm here so in fact I'm sitting in my sewing room with the window which is behind us which is why it's so bright um, and there's definitely thunderclouds coming over so this is my sewing project of the week. Like I said last week, I am trying so hard to slow down. I have so many clothes that I don't wear, so I want to slow down. Um, my other finished project is, sorry, there's a fly in my coffee. <laughs> um, I showed you last week my, what is it called? My bee quilt that I started in, I think I said last week in 2019, but I actually started it in 2018. And I had put it down for ages. Well, I want it finished. So this week, or today actually, while Ruben was sleeping this morning, I made two big blocks. I think I have about another seven or eight big flower blocks to go, and then three or four bees and two or three small flowers. And that will put it all together with a bit of a border and quilt it. I actually I can show you this I also I had made these sunflowers and I had put so there were six by 12 and I had put a flower a border a flower border a flower border and I don't know why I did that but it was the first bit I did and I think that was before I really thought about it well so I unpicked them and put them in pairs instead um, so that they could go as my border around the sorry my phone's telling me it's too hot um, instead of being along the bottom, it just would have looked silly, so I pulled them off and now I can clamp them in my total flowers needed, which is nice. Um, so I will be showing you that in the weeks to come because hopefully by the end of February I can have it finished. <laughs> my grandma rang me today and she is going to come and help me do it. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just... I have already filmed this once and I'm redoing it. I took my next thing off the blocker, but I put it back on so I can show you. It's a sock! So this is, I might turn around so it's not got that horrible seam. So this is the Everyday Sock by Petite Knit. Um, it has a German short row heel, which some people find really tricky, but I don't think it's tricky at all. Um, I did, Oh, I didn't do this one very well with the, I didn't, um, I haven't, I can't speak apparently. I, um, didn't cut them and have to sew in the end, so I've like seamed it in and I, I didn't pull it very tight. Whereas on the second sock, which I started yesterday, I have done it, oh, which one's the start? I've done it a lot tighter and you can't actually see that very much. So this, and I know this isn't sock yarn, so don't at me. This is what I had left over from my previous vest projects. It is the the San it's that it's that brand I can't pronounce. San Yarns um, Sunday Yarn. It's a four ply. It's just what I had. I didn't know if I was gonna like sock making, and I didn't want to purposely go out and buy sock yarn if I didn't like it. So not that I wouldn't have used it for something else anyway. So I just used what I had, um, and. On my Ravelry page, I think I've called these matchy, not matchy. So one is pink and white, and one is white and pink. Um, hopefully I get that finished in the next couple of days, and then I'll have my first pair of socks. Which leads me to what I want to talk to next. I um, have been watching lots of YouTube videos while knitting this week. Um, and I've seen a few about a knitter box challenge of socks. So it's like, knit a pair of socks every every month for a year so you end up with 12 socks um and I would like to give it a go I mean if I don't get them all done it doesn't matter it's my own self-imposed challenge so yeah but I would like to try and knit a pair of socks every month I think I'm going to keep it to just basic socks no lace work or eyelets or all the really pretty things that take lots of time no color work <laughs> I know there's people that love colour work, but I'm just not there yet. So um, I think stripes are probably as 
adventure zone and get oh sorry I've got coffee indigestion it's two o'clock and I'm still drinking coffee <laughs> the life of having a one-year-old <laughs> um so sorry I put up a post this morning about sock patterns and I would love to know if you have any patterns that you would recommend I think I'm going to give the um sorry I've, I've written them down because I, I knew I wasn't going to remember the I'm So Basic Socks by Summer Lee and the Vanilla Socks by Crazy Sock Lady are two patterns I would like to have a look at. Maybe the ones from Summer Lee I might have a look at first. I also have a DK weight pattern by Summer Lee. I think it's called Thickness. Um, this has an 8-ply sock, which I'm going to give a go as well. I just need to get other needles um, for those. I didn't talk about needles. <laughs> I filmed this before and I talked about it then, so please forgive me. I am knitting these on 9 inch circulars. Um, I have tried knitting socks on DPNs and um, on circular, bigger circulars before and have hated it. Absolutely hated it. Um, and then I saw someone really lovely post 9 inch circulars um, and so I ordered some and I think they're great. I do think though, and I, in the few videos I watched about socks, is that you cannot hold them tight because the needle is quite small. It's, it's really only that big. Um, so if, if you're holding it quite tight, you cramp up a lot faster than if you're just holding it loose. You, <laughs> you can't do these all in one day. Well, for me, I can't. I have carpal tunnel and it <laughs> I've had achy arms. Achy wrists all week. Um, but I am really enjoying using the circulars, the 9 inch circulars. I did, in one of the many videos I watched this week, I saw someone use some higher, higher flyers, which are a, a needle about the same size as those circulars, but with just a small flexi cord. And you use three needles, so it's kind of like a cross between using magic loop and dpns and i thought i might knit another pair of socks and if i still like socks i thought i might give those a go but trying not to buy things i'm not going to use this year so they're on the back burner for things i need i don't need them yet i don't think hmm. um if you have anywhere you buy your sock yarn from I'd love to know where you get it. I love all the colours, but I, sometimes I find it really hard to find. I don't mind paying a little bit more for it. I would definitely prefer to support an Aussie. Um, mainly because it's so hard to get things shipped at the moment. We really are having a wave of Omicron. I think the whole world is actually. Um, and it's just harder to get things shipped. Plus I want it now. <laughs> I'm such a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's it's true though. Um, I wrote my little list. No, right? we talked about patterns and yarn. Yeah, so if you if you have anywhere, please let me know. Or if you have any other pattern suggestions, please leave a little comment down below, and I'd love to know what you love knitting, what you love knitting socks with. Um, now, sorry, uh, I get a bit nervous, and I just forget what I'm talking about. Um, I'd like to talk about reopening my Glitter Godmother button resin shop. So I closed it last year before I had my baby. Um, and I haven't reopened it because I can't earn an income and get paid through Centrelink. Um, which is the main reason I haven't opened it. I have wanted to for months, but I didn't want to open it and close it and open it again. So I have just left it closed. I am moving from Etsy to an online store, oh gosh, sorry, to an online store simply because Etsy takes so much of a cut. It is ridiculous. Sometimes I would sell two buttons and make 60 cents. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, let's not, let's not brag about Etsy right now. Um, yeah, so I'm going to open my own online shop and that should happen at the end of February. I have plenty of new shapes and size buttons coming. I'm also considering doing a little bit of sewing stuff to put up there as well. They will be in small batches. Um, 
and definitely all over my Godo Godmother Instagram page. If you haven't or don't follow that, you should have a look, have a have a squiz, and I will definitely be posting more in it from now on. Now until I open my shop, that is. Um, I again have been really inactive there as well, simply because it's just it's so hard. This last year was so hard for me, so yeah. Anyway, I really enjoy resin, so I'm definitely going to do more of that. I am also thinking about, so when I open the shop, I'm going to upload all the stock I currently have, and then I think I'm going to have a, one, a two to three colour release every month, just so that there can be more of, say, a certain colour online than lots of nothing. I want you to be able to enjoy it. I, I really love glitter buttons um, and I want you guys to enjoy it too. <sighs> They're so much fun. They really are. Um, and I would like to know if, if anyone here watching is from overseas, so not from Australia, I'd love to know if you would be interested in buying and I could look into international shipping there. I currently, well I previously didn't sell to international shoppers um simply because i just I, they, I didn't have a market for it not a market for it i just i didn't have enough customers that from overseas so i would love to know if you're from overseas and you would like to buy my glitter buttons yeah i'm also going to do name badges i'm not sure if you've seen them before i before i went on maternity leave i i made a bucket ton of name badges for everyone at work um and I would like to do that again, but I'm going to do that on my website this year. So if you're from work and you're watching, you'll be able to buy them there. <laughs> um, tell your friends about it. <laughs> um, I Oh, sorry. I also thought that in the month of February, as it is the month, I will be reopening my resin shop. I am going to do a month-long podcast, maybe, maybe a series of four. Of resin, so resin and mold making, and where I get my supplies, and how I do it, start to finish, um, so that you guys can give it a go too. I don't believe that things should be all kept for one person to know how to do. Um, I really appreciate people buying from me, but if you want to do it yourself, that's fine, and I'm definitely happy to show people how to. Um, and where I get my acrylic pieces too, yeah be able to show you all my new pieces too, my new colours, um, where I get my glitter. It's sometimes hard to get glitter. Um, yeah, so that will be in February, um, just because it's it'll it'll make sense to me. It'll make sense to me anyway. <laughs> um, I feel like I've talked really quickly, I'm sorry. We've only been talking for 17 minutes. <laughs> I don't know that I have much more to talk about anyway. Um, sorry, <laughs> I've talked really fast and... Um, mm. <laughs> oh, I was going to show you the yarn I got in the post. Sorry, I again, I filmed it twice and I'm <laughs> not sure what I've done and haven't done. So, with that blue duck egg colour, I also got this purple Bellissimo. Now... I should have ordered two balls of this because I don't know what I'm going to do with one. Maybe I will use that thickness sock pattern to make Ruby a pair of socks out of this. Hopefully there will be enough in this. Um, there's a, I think there's 125 metres on a ball. No, but I was right. I was right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use that. Oh, I'm sorry. Really indigestion here today. Um, I will use that soon. I then also, I talked about it last time, I got, in the, and it came in the post, I ordered some undyed merino in both a 4 and an 8 ply from Wild Earth Yarns, which is in New Zealand. And they came, I, so I ordered a kilo of both. Um, I, I find the people who knit, um, knitting boring colours. <laughs> I, I like to find a pattern and then look at it everywhere. I look at it on Instagram, I look at it on Ravelry. If people I know have um, knitted it, I stalk it. I do lots of research before I cast on. 
And I find in the hashtags there is so much beige and brown and really boring blue and white. Except for even black. Black strikes me as a hard colour to knit. Anyway. Um, and I'm not down for that. So I am going to dye my own yarns. Um, the I used Rit dye last time. I will put here is my last cardigan um, that I dyed with Rit dye and some Wild Earth Yarns 8-ply Polyworth. Um, it, it turned out amazing. I really love it. I'm not sure I would need it again though. It was fiddly and took a really long time and I'm not saying never, it's never. I've just got so many other patterns that I really like to knit. So um, the Anchor, Anchor's cardigan, cardigan, my size, is the one I knitted. Um, and I love it. It is really great. It's a bit heavy, I think, just because the Polyworth is a heavier yarn. And I've been knitting a lot with things like, like this, um, Ten Gunnar's Cos. And it's like, it's a, this is a, this is a ten ply, and it's a, a nylon with blown alpaca. So it's quite a lightweight. So the Polyworth, in comparison, was really, um, it's really heavy. But it'll make a really nice warm cardigan for the winter. And well, I guess I'm not wearing it now because it's it's hot and it's muggy here in Queensland. <laughs> um yeah, so I'm gonna have a go with those. I have already stalked some uh, dyes from oh I cannot remember. I will put it along here. But I have picked some colours that I'm going to order eventually. I just, I'm not ordering them until I'm ready to order them and use them. So I'm going to use the 8-ply to make the solder toner crop. Um, and I'm definitely not making it cropped. <laughs> I have a way too big a bum to make it cropped. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited. That'll be my first colourwork piece um, in the future. Maybe not until March, when the weather cools down a bit. Because it'll be 8-ply, so it'll be a bit... Um, It'll be a bit thicker um, yarn, but I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I really enjoy dyeing. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be a sore throat. Um, now, this week I am going to use this fabric that I got at Spotty to make both my son and my husband a shirt. So. My husband loves handmade knit shirts. This is just a knit, it's not very stretchy, um, but it makes a nice t-shirt, this, this sort of knit. Um, my husband loves the Sage Tea by LB Textiles. And I use the basic, super basic tea by Brindle and Twig for Ruby. I think I might make Ruby's long sleeve because he's got quite a lot of short sleeves. We got a lot of hand-me-downs, um, and my mum and my sister-in-law buy lots. Thanks, girls. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to work on this week, and maybe some more quilt blocks. I would really like to finish that quilt by the end of February. Um, yeah, I have a few other birthdays in February that I will be making things for, so... Um, I will start planning those soon and maybe even show you in the coming weeks. Yeah, I think that's all I have to talk to you about today. Um, I'm sorry if this was rushed. I feel <laughs> I feel like it was rushed. Anyway, I'm sorry about the long pause in the middle too. <laughs> um, so I will wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you come back next week and listen to me ramble again. Maybe I'll have made a few more things. I will definitely have finished those socks by then. Um, maybe next week we could talk about my yarn stash, if you would like. Um, and maybe some of my fabric stash. I've got quite a big... This tub is full of... And there's a tub underneath it. Um, full of fabric that I would like to use this year. So we might talk about those. And things I would like to make with them. I might also make a video about knitting... And the things that I thought I needed and didn't need and um, how I got started yeah so maybe I'll do two podcasts next week one about my fabric and yarn stash and one about knitting um, yeah so I hope you have a great week stay safe 
and thank you so much for watching. Give me a like and subscribe and please share me if you can. Thank you!